Well, he's one of the young rising stars out of the evergreen state of Washington. It's Jesse Schlottfeldt, finished fifth in points in 360 competition at Skagit Speedway in 2022. Got his feet wet in 410 competition last year. In the interview, he talks about what's in store for 2023 and some new racetracks that he's planning to hit. That's next here on Getting Up to Speed. This broadcast is brought to you by Meat Freaks Jerky Club. Get the best jerky the world has to offer straight to your door by visiting meatfreaksjerkyclub.com. Pick your box and plan, tell them where to ship, and receive and enjoy. Log on to meatfreaksjerky.com and use promo code SPEED for 10% discount. The 2023 NARC 410 Sprint Series presented by Napa Auto Parts will officially kick off with the Asparagus Cup on Saturday, April 1st at the Stockton Dirt Track. See drivers such as Corey Day, Justin Sanders, Shane Golubic, Bud Kading, and two-time defending series champion Dominic Selzy, along with many more. Pit gates open at 1, front gates at 4, qualifying at 4.30, and racing kicks off at 5.30. Tickets are $30 for general admission, children ages 5 through 12, $25, seniors 65 and over, $25, and children 4 and under are free. For more ticket information, log on to StocktonDirtTrack.com. For more series information, visit www.narc410.com. Hello, race fans. This is Ben Dethridge, host of Getting Up to Speed. In these interviews, we talk to sprint car drivers from the West Coast or beyond the West Coast that are coming to race or drivers that are West Coast based that are going elsewhere to race. We hope you enjoy these interviews and be sure and catch up on all the episodes, whether it be on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, or YouTube. Well, joining me, he drives the number 21 360 sprint car from Arlington, WA. That's Washington, for those of you outside the Pacific Northwest, Washington State to be exact, Jesse Schlottfeldt. Jesse, so glad that you could join me. We're going to be talking some great things. Racing, it's always a great topic talking about racing. Hey, yeah, one of my favorites. 2022 for you, just, you know, going to break down the numbers for you right off the bat. Had 32 overall starts, 17 top 10s, 8 top 5s, 6 podiums, and a local victory in 360 competition at Grays Harbor Raceway. Spent most of the year in 360s. 23 of those 32 starts was 360s. 16 of the 17 top 10s in 360s. Obviously, all your top fives, podiums, and the win in that category. Finished fifth in points at Skagit last year, too. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, uh, it, it was definitely a big stepping stone for 2021. Uh, we uh, we kind of, I don't know, we struggled a lot in 2021. And uh, uh, we... Uh, we, we decided to start off season 2022 kind of down in California to get my feet wet for the uh, season officially started up here in France and tough luck. Uh, I put it in the fence with Larry, ended up on my side. It, it, was, it wasn't the way that we wanted to start the year. And, uh, but then we went to College Grove and Skagit and I had a couple of really good showings there. And, you know, just kind of kept improving throughout the year. It was just really consistent. Dad said he wanted, we wanted to see what a floor time was like because they brought back the whole dirt cup deal. And, uh, it, yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there. So I, I got to run. I got to run a lot of races last year, and I I think twenty twenty three is going to be a, a, a hopefully a, be a, even better than last year. Well, yeah, you mentioned the four ten made nine main events and four ten action, including a top ten finish. How did you feel your abilities were in the four ten, and did they help you in your three sixty once you went back to it? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, it, it was kind of crazy. Uh, I I remember. But when I when I first got to you know stand on the gas and hot laps at the uh, tune up for Dirt Cup, it was uh it, it it's a crazy noticeable amount of difference between the power and um it was it was a little it, it honestly it was really intimidating at first um uh it, it was it was just kind of uh you know it was unexpected I guess uh but I found out that they're honestly a little easier to race sometimes because you have the extra power to get you out of bad situations. And, it, yeah, I don't know. It, I, I, four tens are just really enjoyable to race comparatively between 360s, in my opinion. But. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about Skagit Speedway, a place you got a lot of laps at and have had a lot of success at. 11 starts last year at that racetrack, eight top tens, so half of your top tens in overall competition and 360s came from there. And the majority of your top fives and podiums came from there. Four top fives and four podium finishes. You're, 
you know, that's that's not too bad considering that they had an uptick in car count. There's a lot of good energy buzzing at that place, and it's it's a really tough place to race at. Oh yeah, no, for sure. We are, uh, you know, we're we're pretty blessed with schedule up here. It's a really nice building, a really nice track. But uh, yeah, uh, we we were just I, I just felt super consistent all year. I always felt like I was I, I could challenge for a podium spot every single night, and uh, unfortunately, I I, I I still haven't knocked off uh, a few fifty more four ten than Daddy you know? uh, and I'll be going into my kind of second half third year of three sixty this uh, this year. And uh, you know we're just still just gonna work as hard as we can to finally knock that knock that first one off. You know? yeah. yeah, and as far as 2023 is concerned, what's that looking like? Do you have anything specifically lined up, or some specific yeah, specific things that you want to travel to and try and notch a win at? You know, uh, we are we're, we're planning on actually uh, gonna go next week, hopefully as long as the weather is. Uh, Cooperate. We're going to go race a uh, mini gold cup at Chico, uh, th- that Friday and Saturday night race, and then we'll uh, and then me and Scott will sit down there and we'll race that Tuesday Highland race with Larry. Um, so that's that's exciting. It's all four ten stuff. Uh, we just want to well, I guess as much four ten experience as we can. And, but as for like our scheduling, we're, we're we mainly just we know we're going to plan on running schedule pretty much all year, both in the four ten and two fifty. Um, I like running some of the bigger shows down in California. Uh, Peter Murphy's class is really a nice one. Uh, honestly, lady in, later in the year, I want to get down to the Trophy Cup, uh, the Gold Cup. They're all just, we, we'll, we'll just kind of see what's in the budget this year and make decisions based off that. Well, last year you did quite a bit of traveling too with the WST, the Western Sprint Tour, ran their speed mm-hmm. week and, and got to race at all sorts of different racetracks. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Uh, we got the the speed was cool, really hot. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? <laughs> uh, I got to race Sunset for the first time in a sprint car. I have a lot of laps around there at Micro, and uh, turned out to actually be it, it was a super fun track to race at. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was up on the fence, and it, it was pretty technical. Uh, Yale College Drive was also always an amazing track to go to. It's just one of the uh, one of the tried and two tracks around here and uh, definitely puts out some of the best racing around. Uh, it kind of, it was, it was a little bit of a bummer that we didn't get to go with more tracks last year. Um, cause normally you get to stop at like Lamb and Pete Bay and places like that, which I'm pretty sure are on the schedule this year. But, so we will be looking forward to that this year. And, and I'm pretty sure we'll be planning on running at least one of the CDs. Even though it's in North and South. Sure. Oh, yeah, the northern one starts uh, in in Elma and then ends in Skagit, so it works out great for you. Yeah, I think it, uh, uh, it leads right into the 360 Nationals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yep, Summer Nationals at yep. Skagit Speedway into July. Yeah, no, so that's, that'll be a super fun fun deal. And then obviously the, uh, the August Speed Week, I think, is when it is for the Speed uh, that would join. So when it goes down to Placerville and uh, go and get to race the new track down in uh, Roseburg. Yes, uh, Roseburg Dirt Track. That'll be interesting. I know they had a uh, a pretty. It's not. It's not like people were surprised with how well the uh, the test test they went last year, and uh, I don't know. Hoping for good things for that track. That'd be really cool to have another track down in Oregon. Yeah, that's what I heard. The testing went good. It was ran in the day, and it uh, didn't necessarily slick up. It held moisture, and it wasn't hard on tires. So that that's. That's a good quality. Yeah, that's awesome, especially in today's age. Well, outside of racing, what do you find yourself doing? Is there anything particular, or is it all racing-centric, something to do with making your team faster, making you better as a driver? Um, yeah, you know, it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty much my life right now. Uh, I just... Um, <clears throat> I just started working at a shark racing engines up here. Um, they obviously, they build, build a lot of, a lot of stuff all around the country. Um, and, uh, just been working there for the past month now. And so it's nice to have a job that's focused, you know, I, I get to work with a lot of similar people that have you know, similar interests in racing and we all, we all have the same goal. And so that's been really fun getting to learn all the technical stuff. I just, I like to know as much as I can about my car. So 
yeah. really helps really helps propel towards that goal. Well, and then you have Mark Hewson who owns Shark Racing oh, yeah. Engines with such a wealth of knowledge, so much success, not just at Skagit Speedway, but the entire Northwest and one of, you know, the Mount Rushmores of as far as pioneers in the last couple of decades to really show how it, how to get it done. Oh yeah, for sure. I was just talking to him the other day. Um, we were dynoing a motor and I, I, I think he said he had something like 276 wins. Yeah. And <laughs> that's just like, I, like I don't even have like probably a third of those, like I don't even have a third of that number and just starts in the sprint car alone. So just to think about it, that's pretty crazy. And, you know, I obviously I didn't get to grow up uh, watching him. Yeah, I just kind of all, all I get to really know is like hear through other people about you know how amazing he was, and but just to be get to be around him all day and work around him. You know, he's just like you say, he's just such a wealth of knowledge, and it's yeah. I just I hope I can at least tap into a little bit. It'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I remember him with the Northern Sprint Tour back in the nineties. Um, mm-hmm. he, he was, you know, one of those first guys that came down, Randy Ridge, Sean, o, Sean Owilski, uh, Rick Fowler oh, yeah. were some, some of those guys that, uh, you know, even Jason Sowald even then, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, obviously had a success at Skagit, but it also went further places. And, um, I want to think he had some success at Cassidy Speedway on Vancouver mm-hmm. Island, uh, gold, oh, yep. gold, gold cup at Edmonton in uh, yeah. Alberta and ran, ran in Montana and had success out there as well. I mean, just, just a, a, a remarkable driver. And I remember him coming back to, uh, to race in 2006, like a, a mm-hmm. down for speed week. And he almost won at Willamette. Like there was a lap car that spun and he got into him or stopped Jason sides of world of outlaw fame ended up winning it. And it was a late yep. race. Yeah. It was a heartbreaker with a capital H. Huh? Yeah, the, yeah. He was even telling me. I think um, uh, what was it? I, I think he raced. He raced the sprint car at Skagit, like back in like 2017 or something like that. Okay. Uh, because I, uh, I guess uh, the guy that he was there helping, um, he ended up hurting himself sometime right before hot laps or something. Just it just happened to be that uh, Mark had his gear there with him. Uh, doing a memorial lap for one of his buddies and uh he, he ended up racing that night i think he ended up finishing like second or something wow wow yeah so, yeah <laughs> the, well, the, proof. He, still, he still got it this was uh the, the story i was talking about with speed week at willamette with nst was 2006 so and then the oh, next yeah. year i think Dan, his daughter danielle started racing but that's so cool that you get to you get to just be around that aura of knowledge and and success and have that influence on you, and no doubt it, it, it will rub off. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. That's, that's going to help. I'm just, you know, super, super thrilled, super blessed to have the opportunity to work around them, and Scuba and Chris, you know, they're just a, a, just an amazing group of guys. You know? Well, I know that it seemed just like yesterday you got in a sprint car, but it's been it's been a couple of years. But, but moving yeah. forward, like short-term goals and obviously you said California running a lot of the 410 stuff and you mm-hmm. know, trophy cup you guys went there last year and and plan to make it this year is there anything in the cards possibly maybe not this year but seasons down the road that you would like to make a run out to the the midwest maybe hit Knoxville or something in the central part of the country yeah you know we've we've always talked about it. it's always something that we've wanted to do we uh big thing was just trying to get me as comfortable as possible around tracks around here and just getting as many laps as I can before I go and tap some of the big, bigger half miles and bigger tracks that Midwest offers. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely always, it's always up in the air. There's always a possibility. I mean, we could even do it this year. I, who knows? Uh, we don't, we've, we've never really, a lot of the, a lot of the people that help me, they, they work full-time jobs and it's kind of, so we can't exactly, I don't know sometimes it's hard to plan things out and but also at the same time it's hard to just do trips just on a whim just like <laughs> sometimes you wake up it, like sometimes we want to wake up and we want to go travel and and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't so it, it's kind of sometimes hard to have them take off work and feel guilty sometimes but we're all we all love what we all love this whole racing deal and 
I hate, I, most, most times they have asked me no problem taking off work, so I can't thank them enough. And, but, so, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it, I'd love to. I'd really love to. Just get as many tracks and rebuild as I possibly can. And just, just want to win races, man. It's really that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And as far as uh, when your guys' schedule is coming up of which race you're going to travel to or maybe some recaps of how the night went or if people want to purchase some merchandise, is there some good outlets on social media or on the World Wide Web that people can log on to? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I have my both, I have my racing Facebook page and then also, obviously just my personal Facebook page, but uh, probably not a social socially active as I should be, but sure. <laughs> you always, you know, if you ever want to reach out or do anything, you know, Jarvis Motorsports on Facebook or my, or just my name, Jesse Schlotfeld on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, always try and, I mean, you try and post when it comes around to race season, but not, not always been the best about it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then as far as sponsors that are helping you out that you know of for 2023, anybody that you want to acknowledge? Uh, yeah, got to think. Um, Triple H Race Products, uh, Castilla Chiropractic, Typical and Coding. They, uh, they, he's always been a huge supporter of my racing and just a really good friend of mine. Uh, Shark Racing en- Engines, obviously. Uh, every little detail, he's be homes. Just all those guys, you know, couldn't do without them. Um, my dad, my mom, obviously, got to think them. <laughs> Wouldn't be here without them and without all their support. Uh, Scout, always busting ass on everything. Uh, making sure it's wants me to be as successful as possible. Ian, Ian has always, uh, he's, he's been popping on and last year he helped us out all year. And, you know, he, he was just a really big, big part of the team. Uh, he'll help us out again this year when he can. But yeah, just those guys, like those guys and those companies, they're just, that's what makes us all possible. Awesome. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in California sometime this spring. Hopefully it'll be, uh, quite a few times before things get going up here in the pack in W. So, um, but best of luck to 2023. And I have a feeling we're going to be running into each other quite a bit this year. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Always love running into you. All right. Thanks a lot, Jesse. Yeah. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this latest episode of Getting Up to Speed with me, Ben Dethridge. We hope you enjoyed this program. We hope also that you hit the subscribe button and the like button as that really helps things out, spreads things out. Be sure and share as well on social media so that more people can listen to these great interviews and from these great drivers. Getting Up to Speed is a production of High Side Racing Promotions. For more information, you can check it all out on Facebook at High Side Promotions.